until I'm an old man. I've retired five times in my life. And we're going to talk about lasers all day. I also tend to be a little cynical in my old age, but I don't give a damn. Uh, I'm not politically correct. It's a great intellectual desert. Uh, so please visit the don't stay. And then I discovered I was wrong. Uh, uh, you damn well better be able to show me the evidence. And if you can't show me the evidence, don't darken my door again until you can. So if you compare laser therapy as advertised by various and sundry manufacturers, Laser periodontal therapy to traditional non-surgical therapy, scaling and replacing. Do you have a superior reduction in probing depth, bleeding on probing, or gains in clinical attachment? We're going to address that issue. Do you actually sterilize a pocket? How many times have you heard that? I see it all the time in our own literature. It's mostly opinion literature. It's not research, but. I see it in marketing claims. I've heard manufacturers down here in the exhibits tell people that you can sterilize a pocket. How predictable is it to treat periodontitis with a laser? Can you achieve on a predictable basis the desired clinical endpoints? Uh, if you can't do it, teach, that's why I taught for 17 years. And I'll tell you this now and get it out of the way. Most practitioners who are in their office day in and day out, regardless of what they do, tend to overestimate, overestimate the benefit of their therapy. And there are reasons for that. That's been documented in all kinds of literature, medicine, dentistry, psychology, for forever. That's been studied ad nauseum. There are reasons for that. The reason basically is that you're in an office you have bought, in this case, a laser for anywhere from 15000 up to seventy five or 80000 You want it to work. Why the hell else would you buy it? Spend that kind of money on it. So there is a bias built in just by the purchase level. You have no control group. You're not calibrated. You're not even looking at the same parameters on, on different patients sometimes. And so it's not a blind study. It's not even a longitudinal study sometimes. It's not controlled. It's uncalibrated. Yeah, in your eyes, it probably works. You bring some hot dog like me in there from an academic environment and starts looking at control groups. Starts looking, are they appropriate and adequate? Are you a blinded examiner? Are you a calibrated examiner? Do you have sufficient people in, a, in your control group versus your test group to get reliable data from it? You start breaking these things down, and all of a sudden you don't look so good. So we're going to talk about that. Uh, it all goes to hell. Uh, the ND YAG, which is a very popular laser for treating periodontal disease. Uh, I, I get nervous. I'll. Uh, fall off the stage eventually. Uh, 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 the neodymium YAG, uh, the one that's most popular that you hear about all the time, is the one made by Millennium Dental Technologies. It's the uh, Perio Lays, I think it's their model name. You'll notice it has a fairly good uh, absorption in water and also up in pigmented tissue. Now, We'll talk about that later in terms of how it works on bacteria because there are certain types of bacteria that used to be called the black pigmented bacterioides that use hemoglobin as an essential nutrient and in the process of metabolizing that they produce black or brownish black pigment. Now, and because of the selective absorption in dark colors, it also has a selective killing of pigmented bacteria. Uh, uh, that and that's not good. 
I don't know what idiot comes up with these ideas, for God's sakes. The people of Millennium hired an engineer, or I suppose, unless it was one of them, one of the dentists that owned that company, and they actually developed what's called a hyperpulse or a superpulse. And that corrected the problem because any one pulse of that instrument, although it has a peak high energy level, it isn't long enough to create a problem. You have made a transition between destruction or ablation of tissue to stimulation of tissue from energy. And it's that concept that the Millennium people claim that they can take advantage of to produce, when they treat an intrabony pocket, to regenerate periodontal ligament, bone, and cement. Uh, just cutting in and out, my hearing is probably going. <laughs> That's the second thing that's left this week. Memory was the other one. Uh, the the uh, 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 scalpel. Uh, 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 <coughs> Uh, uh, weird things, uh, but they're in fact it scared the pee out of me. Uh, and uh, some strange things can happen. Uh, there are lasers that can reflect. We take advantage of that a little bit when we deal with implants. Now, implants, titanium, uh, is probably not a good idea to use an Arabian Yag around an implant, although Millennium says you can do it. Uh, I haven't seen any papers in the literature that support using them. Most of the time they're using diodes or urban yags or carbon dioxide lasers. Why? Because all of those are reflected off of the titanium surface. The titanium absorbs no heat from them. So you can decontaminate the surface with those lasers. The urban yag, on the other hand, I, and I guess it relates back to their idea of the super pulse, uh, the millisecond super pulse, they, they evidently, the titanium absorbs some heat from that, but not sufficient amounts of heat to be transferred to the surrounding bone so that it necrosis the bone. That's the problem. You don't want to heat up the titanium implant, it'll necrosis the bone around it. Uh, uh, the other thing is that uh, the Millennium people like to say that they can sterilize pockets or diode people for that matter. Uh, that they can sterilize pockets because these radiations of heat affect the bacteria. Well, that's crap. Uh, how can you kill bacteria and stimulate cell growth? Does that make sense? Well, you know, people who are not used to thinking like I am probably don't pick up on that. You start asking the guys down there in the booth selling these things how they do that, and they'll get this deer in the headlight look and they'll be yeah, well let me go ask somebody and then they never come back uh, I, I used to do that just to pimp them to pimp them to pimp them oh I'm an old man well that's crap oh I'm an old man for I don't give a damn to pimp them for I don't give a damn for I don't give a damn well that's crap to pimp them well that's crap and then I discovered I was wrong. And then I discovered I was wrong. And then I discovered I was wrong.